Welcome back everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1967 Mercedes-Benz 280 SL. Now this is 937 horsepower, 859 pounds-feet of torque from a 7.2 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine. The car itself now weighs 2,881 pounds, has off-road tyres, all-wheel drive and off-road suspension. And it can now do 0 to 60 in 4.038 seconds, 0 to 106.424 seconds, and going to a top speed of 204 miles an hour. So we actually have two Mercedes Benz, or Mercedes AMG as they're now known uh, in some regards, um, in the top 20. We have the uh, GT Black Series in at number one, which has been there for quite a while now. And we have the newer version of an SL like this uh, in the form of the SL65 AMG Black Series in at number 17th so uh, yeah not quite expecting this to be as quick as those um, although quite frankly my expectations are quite low for this because um, yeah there's no real great um, stats there to be honest at all launch is decent but that only really matters for the first few seconds of the uh, of the run and yeah acceleration is okay but yeah handling and braking are on the lower side of things and even the off-road capability is not the best either so yeah this might well prove not to be all that quick, but it could also surprise us. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, see uh, which way the wind blows in that regard. Kind of looks like um, Jeremy Clarkson's version of, you know, an off-road convertible called the Excellent. Although that was obviously based on a much newer SL than this. It does look kind of similar, especially with the off-road tyres and the raised suspension. Although the suspension hasn't been raised too much, it's by less than 0.7 of an inch. It's obviously not a lot, but it'll still make a difference in terms of dealing with the off-road elements on this course. And the one thing this does have going for it is the fact it's still quite small. It's got um, not much in the way of weight. And even though it's far from the most power you can put in this car, it's still a lot of power in a car of this size and weight. And it's hardly a small amount compared to what it had originally, which was well under 200 horsepower. So, yeah, still a fair decent amount of power. Especially for a car of this type and age. Yeah, this is far off its 60th anniversary, so, uh, yeah definitely a bit of an old timer in comparison to a lot of cars we've had on this series. Especially the two Mercedes in the top 20. A little bit on the bouncy side there. It bounced up from the rear and then the front bounced up as well. So far hasn't uh, caused too many control issues. It's just very funny to watch. At least the centre of gravity is quite low, so even though it is wobbling around a lot and bouncing about, it's not likely to roll over. That's not to say that it couldn't, but especially in comparison to some cars that we've had in the series. So yeah, despite the stats not, you know, giving much hope, I mean, it does feel reasonably quick. It's just a shame that the bouncing around is slowing us down at some points. When it's not up in the air, it is reasonably controllable. There's a reasonable turn of speed. good turning as well, not much in the way of understeer. And despite my reservations, we're not that far off the uh, newer SL, the uh, AMG Black Series that I talked about earlier, which 
yeah, managed 3 minutes 14.061, whereas this is 3 minutes 15.056. So we're just under a second behind that car, which puts us a few places behind, as there are a lot of cars that are bunched up together, uh, quite close. And we are ever so slightly behind the 1973 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am SD455, which managed 3 minutes 15.053. So the ever so slightest amount of margins there. But we are quicker than an Aston Martin 177, a Ford number 4 Focus RS rally car, an Alfa Romeo um, 155 Q4, which obviously had all-wheel drive as standard, so that didn't have that to really uh, deal with as an extra. We also put in the Lamborghini Squadra Corsa, Huracan, Plymouth Fury, Brabham BT62 and a Lotus Avaya. But yeah, we're not only just slightly behind the Pontiac Fiber, but we're also slightly slower than the W motors like in Hypersport that was in the uh, previous episode. So uh, yeah, despite my expectations being quite low or no real expectations at all, that was actually surprisingly quick. So uh, yeah, the stats certainly weren't giving us the whole story as yeah, this was far faster than those stats would ever uh, have made you, uh, you know, made you think it would be like. Because uh, yeah, the handling and the braking stats are pretty on the low side of things, and yet the controllability was good. The braking brakes weren't too shoddy. Um, obviously, it's helped by the fact that it doesn't weigh that much, so it doesn't have much in the way of momentum to slow down. But yeah, the brakes were overall good, and uh, yeah, the all-wheel drive system wasn't providing too much in the way of understeer either. So uh, yeah, on the whole, a very good car, despite um, yeah, not looking like it would be. Nonetheless, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.